Our first meeting was at a prayer group in McAllen, Texas. He seemed like a regular guy with his oversized shirt, uh, baggy pants, and a unruly head of hair, but he would speak of spiritual and religious things in a way that I had never heard before. One of the things about Timmy is that he has a very quiet persistence in doing anything. Uh, when he was a little boy, I mean like two years old, I remember my dad one day showing him how to lift the corner of a couch. My brother spent, I think at least two or three days, just, he'll just wander there by himself, go and try to lift the couch. And finally, uh, we felt kind of bad for him and my dad <laughs> went to the couch and lifted it without Timmy seeing. And that's when he decided to stop. <laughs> He thought he uh, did it himself. My first recollection of Deacon Timmy is when I met him at uh, New Jersey for a retreat. Father Thomas Tarrell and myself were standing in the back of the church watching these young people come in. And here comes this red car with very loud playing music. And this young guy comes out of this car, you know, wearing the most baggiest pants you've ever seen with a very loose shirt that another person or two can easily fit into with a hat pointed to the side and uh, walks into the retreat hall. And we were kind of staring at him and uh, kind of explained, you know, what a specimen is this? There came a time when he needed to make a decision. And it, I believe it happened during a retreat, a two day silent retreat in New Jersey. When he, that was like a turning point for him. He decided to live his Catholic faith the way it was meant to be lived. Uh, whether it was through study classes or music classes or driving us to receive sacraments, he made daily life the instrument to help us grow closer to God. Uh, we really believed we could be saints because of him. I think he was the first one to tell us that we're all called to be saints and he convinced us um, that we could really become saints. He is one young man who did not fit into common expectation of the crowd or Jesus youth or the church. Rather, he wanted to set a path very unique to the modern young man. The line of teachings of uh, John Paul II, where there is a deeper focus on the being and the personal being and the discovery of a young person towards the fullest dignity and potential of that person. He wanted to commit his life to poverty and he had a very different understanding of poverty. It does not mean that he had to go to some other distant place or stay there, but rather he wanted to embrace the spirit of poverty as a bride and he wanted to live in that particular spirituality. Later when Thomas Political told that he wanted to consider the life of priesthood uh, and listening to all his different aspirations, something very new and novel this thought came up in my mind. How is it possible? Because Thomas wanted to lead a life of poverty. He wanted to go after the lost generation in the universities or out in the world, which nobody has any access. And then looking into that existing reality, working in a migrant community, how is this possible within the structures of the Catholic Church? I still remember that conversation that I had with my brother um, when he told me that he would he was going to become a priest. Uh, I was driving and I had to pull over. <laughs> I was so, I was overjoyed and, and honored that God would allow a priest to come from our family. Whenever I think about the life of Thomas Pulikal, this question, how is it possible? But everything is possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. And another beautiful moment was about signing the Memorandum of Understanding uh, between Jesus Youth and the St. Thomas Sarah Malabar Catholic Diocese of Chicago. So we had a lot of discussions about various clauses involved in that. And then when, when Thomas Pulikla shared his, his thoughts about serving the poor, serving the, the young people who are lost from the mainstream of the society, I think that really touched the heart of the diocesan authorities, especially Bishop Jacob Mangadi and uh, everything was so smooth from, from that moment onwards. We're very 
pleased today, this very special day, that Deacon Timmy, soon to be Father Thomas Pulikal, uh, is being ordained for the Cyril Malabar Church and for the Jesus Youth Movement. Uh, Timmy, in these years, four years at St. Vincent de Paul, has been a great gift to our, our seminary. Academically, he has shown he's the valedictorian of his class. He gave a beautiful address. So Timmy has, has done an amazing job intellectually here in the seminary. But the other dimensions of priestly formation, the human, the spiritual, and the pastoral, Timmy has, has really become an amazingly well-rounded man uh, that we couldn't be more proud of. After Father Das and Father Ditto, we are going to have the third priest ordained for the mission of the Jesus Youth Movement. I met Timmy almost 18 years back, and I'm amazed in the way he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. In the past years, Timmy contributed to the growth of the movement in different ways. He was part of the International Council, and he's still a part of the International Formation Team, and he was the one who prepared uh, the monthly reflections almost for three years for the whole movement. One of the unique contributions he brought into the movement is the integration of the self-act and self-discovery of a young person with a mature accompaniment of elders and families. And there was a harmony. Normally this is a contrast, but he brought a harmony in these both moments within this is it. it is all the power of the Holy Spirit. He had confusions, we had confusions, the diocese had confusions, the Jesus youth had confusions about how this is going to happen. But it is happening right now. So I'm so proud that now we have a priest who is in the line of Jesus Christ, the order of Melchizedek, who is becoming a blessing through the moment to the entire church and the world.